Well, hi everyone. This is the Euracool Euracool Teach Teacher Outreach event, and we're starting the day. Well, you know it's early here in the UK, but it's not so early in Japan. We're starting with our connection with Japan. Bruce Lander is going to talk to us about the work of the Mobile Sig. That's the Mobile Assisted Language Learning Special Interest Group. Uh, and I know he's got loads of wonderful things to share with us. Um, so before we start that session, just to show you a little bit about who we are and what we do and where you can find us. Mm. This is actually uh, a day following our annual conference, which has just finished. That was entirely online this year in France mm. or from France. And we'll be uh, possibly, depending on how things are next year, <laughs> blended or online or physical uh, in Iceland next year. Um, so please do follow us on our social media sites and uh, connect with Eurocore if you want the very best in uh, language learning expertise, uh, particularly computer assisted language learning expertise. So you can see Bruce uh, at the bottom of my screen here at the moment, but I'm going to ask him now to share his screen and yep. um, talk us through what he's uh, got to tell us today. Thank you, Bruce. Just OK, thank you. Thank you for that, Teresa. And um, Kate, Kate. <laughs> OK, so just to make sure you can see my slides. Yep, absolutely. Yes, yep. you can. OK, all right. So uh, let me first introduce myself. My, my name is um, Bruce, and um, I think you can see me. I can't quite see myself. This is not Zoom. This is um, using Blackboard Collaborator today, and I'm used to Zoom. So uh, I'm going. I am actually have been the chair of the MOLSIG at Eurocall, which uh, Teresa just introduced. And uh, for three years, we have been introducing practical and empirical studies on the topic of MOL. MOL stands for, of course, Mobile Assisted Language Learning. And uh, it, the mo Mobile Assisted Language Learning refers to any form of ICT or tech tool that is mobile, like smartphones or tablets. Rather than call-based, rather than computer-based, we focus on smartphones and um, tablets to use for um, mostly informal language learning, so out of the class. So any forms of apps, any podcast presentations or collaborative tools that you use would be in, uh, incorporate uh, the umbrella or term of more. Okay. And uh, recently, you may have heard of the term formative assessment. Formative assessment is something which is focused on um, giving feedback, um, formative feedback, I guess, to students through ICT tools rather than summative assessment. So summative assessment focuses on grades, formative assessment focuses on giving uh, verbal feedback or written feedback or comments to student written material through ICT. Okay, and also the promotion of SRL. And SRL stands for self-regulated learning, which is something that um, has been a key focus point at this year's conference. You may have heard of that in different literature. Uh, around the topic of mole and call of late. So um, before we get started on what I'm going to do, so this is going to be a very interactive, well, it was meant to be interactive, um, and uh, interactive session where I was, I am going to introduce three tools, which hopefully you can use in your teaching setting. And for me to use these tools today, I need to know your names and uh, contact details. So what I, what I need really is your name and your um, email address. Okay, so uh, if you have a phone, which I'm sure you all do, or an iPad or a tablet of some form, if you could use this QR code to, it will open a Google link a Google link and uh, let me also add that to 
the chat the chat here uh, oh dear <laughs> uh, that's a bit confusing uh, okay and then you should have a link there just to make sure uh, Teresa and Kate can you are you doing that yes I'm, I'm yes, filling yes. out your Google form yep okay and it may and may or may not be the correct one what does it say at the top well, I'm on to page two. Um, it was asking about uh, my. Page two. Yeah, I've got question five. Are you okay. interested in working on some of these activities, professional development projects, and so on? Okay, so d don't you don't have to answer quit, uh, part two. So that part two bit was something I used yesterday. So just answer answer the first three questions, which were your name and your email contact details. Okay, all right. Okay, so we've done that. And then another thing I'd like you to do today, so the audience, we'd like, I'd like you to use either the same, the same smartphone, the same tool, hand, uh, mobile device you have now, and go to www.menti.com. And if you've, used, if you've used Mentimeter before, you'll know that this is um, uh, another collaborative interactive tool for interactive presentations. Okay, if you go to menti.com, you'll come to a, a page that has asks for a code. Okay, and it'll look something like this, something like that. And the code, the code, sorry, so I work in Japan, everyone, and this is why there's Japanese in some of these slides here. <laughs> and uh, so the code today is 2166. 6822. Okay, so this is an anonymous interactive tool, so I don't know who has said what, or, and um, this is something which has actually been used by many of the plenary speakers in, in uh, your call past conferences since last year. I think this tool, Mentimeter, was established 2018, I think, so it's not been around for too long. 2166-6822, okay? All right, and you should have a set of questions there. Okay, could you confirm to me what question you appears when you input this number? I've got what online ICT tools do you use at the moment? At the moment, okay, all right. So, okay, so if you could answer, Maybe you could add any tools, any 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 form of apps or technology you use in your classroom today, and that could be anything from an LMS to Quizlet to Moodle to um, online dictionaries or anything like that. There are so, so many. One minute, just, <laughs> yeah, to so just so one, many. Yes, yes. Well, I guess you you are call specialists. That's why <laughs> that's why you're here. But for the average. Um, Joe or Jolina, they might, might might not be too many. I think if Kate and I continue to fill this in, you're gonna you're gonna have a long, long list. We'll be going for quite some okay. time, Bruce. I've okay. stopped, I've stopped right, now. I've, li I've limited it and sent it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um let me get back to where I was. Okay. Okay, so you should be able to see my my window there. These are the answers that we've um, come up with. Menti, Quizlet, 
H5P, I'm not sure of that one, Google Workspace, Kahoot, Quizlet, Articulate, Vivox, don't know that one, Future Learn, Teams, Moodle, WordPress. Okay, so lots, lots and lots, lots and lots. Okay, so there should have been two other, two other questions here, two other questions. So on the Menti page, on your, um, on your, hold on. Uh, there should be a different, there should be another question now that says, how are you feeling today? So if you could answer how you are feeling in three words. Okay, this come populated. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> I think I lit the downbeat. Oh, yeah. That's a linguist. Yes. I oh, thought that we was should. Me. Sorry. <laughs> Interested, happy. A little downbeat. Hungry. Yes. Oh dear. It's breakfast time, isn't it? So excited. It is for European. Us. Ah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, it's dinner time here, and um, anyway. So this is this is um, uh, just a few things I wanted to introduce. So Mentimeter can be used uh, in any form of any class you have, especially if you've got online classes. And I use it a lot for interacting with the audience when I can't be with the audience. So in my online classes, I use it for asking questions, for formative assessment. You can also ask, uh, you can also, can input Q uh, and A sessions, or this, your audience can ask you questions whenever you want. And um, it, questions to the audience can be open, based, or closed, and um, it allows you to interact with the audience. Challenging, mm, definitely. So the past eighteen months for me have been um, mm, yeah. I use Mentimeter quite a lot and, and have done for a little while. Um, yes. But I'm worried that now they've started to um, started to charge, it becomes yes. yeah yeah it becomes a bit challenging. So I'm very limited. I can only ask one question <laughs> or set up one set because I don't have an mm. Uh, mm. an institutional mm. account or it's mm. a bit of a a bit mm. of a challenge. So mm. v Vivox I think is the one that we have inst uh, provide or uh, Vivox, has okay. been provided institutionally but I, uh, but i prefer menti i like the, the same thing uh, i like the mm. um mm. interface mm. yeah so the, and we the all let's face the teachers it, face those challenges don't we because you know that's right how many how many apps do you pay for <laughs> mm. that's right there, and so many of these these individual apps are, are going private now and their only source of income is through the um, registered accounts like us. So um, unfortunately, it's a it's a uh, a common trend these days to ask for a little bit of money. So there's a way around that though. There there is a free version that Mentimeter offers, but it has limited questions. But I pay uh, maybe five six pounds a month for the annual membership and allows me a very versatile array of functions. So I would recommend using Mentimeter for that. All right, so let me get back to my slides here. So, um, so here, here again are some of the tools which I'll be introducing today for, for more based presentations. Okay, and just to make sure you can click, you can see these slides again, a bit confusing with BB. Yes, uh, Teresa, we're can you we're see currently this? See, we're currently seeing your Menti slide. Ah, right, okay, let me change that. Ah, 
Okay, now I think I know how to use this tool. All right. Okay, so uh, on your computer, on your computer, where I would like you to, um, we've used Menti, we've done that. Uh, I'd like you to open these first three tools here. These three. So peerival.mobi, speakingphoto.com, and info flipgrid. So Flipgrid, I'm going to be introducing that today. Speaking Photo, and another one called Peer Eval. And all three of these tools are great tools which require very little registration and are good for giving presentations, so online presentations. Okay, so Peer Eval, Speaking Photo, and Flipgrid. So while you're doing that, I'm going to continue talking about presentations. So I think every teacher, every EFL, ESL language teacher around the world, at some point in their teaching career, at some time, they have um, given, instructed students to give presentations. And I think it's a common aspect of, uh, of our teaching styles these days. But and uh, in, during the pandemic, during the past two years, this may have been difficult because we may not be seeing the students in person. And when you're not seeing the students in person, can we still have them do presentations? The answer to that, I would agree, argue is yes, because we can do it with some of the tools which I'm gonna to introduce to you today. So these are some snippets some screenshots of some of my students giving presentations in, my, in the setting where I work here in Japan. And often when the students give presentations, they're often lots of mediocre presentations, a few very good ones, and a few very bad ones. So the pictures here are mostly of the good ones I have. So, uh, but some of the bad ones, some of the bad present presenters, they often have everything on the screen, like this, this everything on the screen, and they just read from the screen, or they read from their notes, and it produces a very poor, uh, atmosphere and nobody's listening and there's no interaction and uh, there's no eye contact <laughs> and this is what happens so when these students give these presentations which are um, very poorly managed very poorly prepared and often just text on a screen with little pictures it produces the same result every time boredom boredom so when giving presentations I often say Eye contact, loud voice, nice pictures, minimal text, no reading and smile. The five, the six golden rules of giving presentations. And just do not have no eye contact, no mumbling, only one picture, only read lots of text and no smiling. Okay, so how is this possible today in the world of Zoom? How is it possible? So it is possible through three tools which I'm going to introduce to you today. The first one is called Peer Eval. Okay, Peer Evaluation, or Peer Eval for short, is a peer eval, is a peer evaluation tool which is available for free online to everyone. And um, this is what the website looks like. When, if you do a search for Peer Eval backslash Mobi, I think, mobile as an M-O-B-I, you get this page here, okay? And then if you log on to this for the first time, it'll ask if you're a student or a teacher. If you click on the student button, then you'll be asked to add a access code. Okay, and I'll give you that later because we're gonna try this today. Uh, or if you're the teacher, which we all are, you click on here and you have to register, open an account. No need to do that right now, but let me show you what happens. Peer Eval was uh, produced by a man called Professor Tom Robb. Tom Robb is a familiar name to pretty much everyone in call in Japan for, a, uh, for starters, but he also has a, um, a following worldwide and is a, has been a regular at Eurocall for the past 10 years, I know. And he produced a famous online extensive reading tool called M reader 
or Moodle Reader, which is now called mReader. It allows students to um, take quizzes for book for graded readers that they've read. And if they get more than six out of 10 questions correct, they get all the words for that book. And it's like um, a cumulative form of um, extensive reading tool, which is he's recently won an award for. He won a lifelong work award for by the extensive reading European, I think European um, SIG. Okay, and he's actually retired now, but used to live in Kyoto in Japan, very far, not so far from where I am. Okay, so Peer Eval was released in 2017. It's free and it allows you to create rubrics. So to have students evaluate each other while they're giving presentations. It's a very good tool for presentations because um, it means everyone is active when someone else, when they're not giving a presentation. So without tools like peer eval, we, questions arise like, what do other students do while they're not giving a presentation? And more times, more often than not, what happens is they have their computer open, they're putting the final touches on their PowerPoint and not listening a word to the presenter at the front of the class who's nervous and giving their presentation in a very kind of nerve wracking um, style. So uh, peer assessment or peer eval is something which uh, you can find literature on and uh, Otoshi and Heffernan in 2008 said that peer assessment is considered an important activity to develop students learning and facilitate learner autonomy. And it's, this is connected also to formative assessment because the teacher can use this same tool, peer eval, to give feedback to every presenter that they see. And if because you're writing it online, students can access it informally anywhere they want using their the tool, the peer eval tool. Okay, and uh, so formative assessment is a, and a wide a wide variety of methods that teachers use to conduct in-process evaluations of student comprehension. So you may have heard of that term quite a lot recently. But how it works? Let me know how it works. So again, this is this is the the home the home page. And when you have signed in and registered, it, you'll come up with this screen. Very simple. There are no no icons here at the side. Nothing here. Lots of kind of open blank spaces, which I like. Uh, you create an account, and then you create a class. Okay, so this is how you create the class. Uh, you go down to here, you click on this bit here, new class, and then click on this one. And then you should have a name, a page, which, oh, sorry, a page, something like this, which will appear. Okay, and here you put in the, the handle, what is called, I guess that's the, the login name, the given name and the family name, and an email address of every student or person that you want to give the present, that you want to evaluate with this tool. Okay, and when you've done that, you'll have um, the opportunity to create a rubric. So the rubrics are all blank, which allows you to make up to six rubrics with a grade of one to five for each section. So we have one, one, if at one point is um, measuring pronunciation, another is contact, content, eye contact, originality, and delivery of the speech. Okay, and when you've done that, you should have a code. Uh, you, well, you should, it should produce a code, and this is what the code is here. So we're gonna actually try this today. Okay, O-W-S-Z-V-J-A-E. So I'd like you, for those listening to this, to try this now. Okay, so go to peerival.mobi. Sorry, forget that Japanese there. Peerival search, that says. Okay, and you'll come up with this screen and you click on, um, get rid of the pen here. Yeah, there it is. And you click on students and then it'll come up with a screen that looks like this. So if you're using your phone, it'll look like this. This is on a web browser, any form of web browser. 
Okay, and we need to input the nut, the code. It's called O W S Z V J A E. Okay, not this code. So if you have a pen, get that down. I'm just type, type this into my computer so you remember here. While you're doing that, I will have to put in O W S Z V J A E. Okay. So input the code, but don't input anything else yet, just the code. Bruce, I did submit and it says there's nobody else in the class. Okay, so uh, don't hit submit yet. Oh, I have to input sorry. your names. I haven't. That's why. <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> Kate, Kate um, uh, just make up an email address. Okay. And then, Teresa, I'm going to do it for you as well. Teresa, T E R E S A. There's no, it's not fair, yep, Teresa. Right? Yeah. No, no, just no H. We have having anyone else uh, registered right now, or is it just the three of us? It's, it's just, just the three, three here of us, at the moment. It? It's just us, yeah. Okay, all right. So let's go back to. It should be at. Oh dear, hold on. Uh, okay, so we're at this stage here, and then here you put in the code I've just given you, so that. O W S Z V J A E, and then here uh, below that you write your first name, just your first name, which in in Pirivala they're calling it handle. Okay, and then click submit, and you should have something like this up here. Yeah, currently no one else in the class. I'm getting. Yeah, I'm getting the same. Um, okay. Uh, well, all right. Let me show you from my phone. I was going to show you my phone. And if this was Zoom, I know exactly how to share my phone so that you can see it. But I don't know how to do that with BB. So let me move on. Let me move on. Okay. So, um, so the general idea with peer eval is that you uh, it allows students to evaluate each other while someone else is giving a presentation. Fantastic. So that often had have this problem with them um, not knowing what others should be doing, especially when the classes are online. Uh, so with peer eval, that alleviates that, that problem. So everyone has to watch each other, listen to each other, and give comments back to each other. Okay. So the comments, the pros for this idea are that it's, it makes for an active audience. It's anonymous, and that could be a pro or a con. It's free. It means that everyone is participating. It's collaborative. It's using MOL. It's fun to an extent, and it puts more pressures on, pressure on the students to listen to what other students are saying. Okay. And of course, there are disadvantages to any, any tool you use, but the, some of them here are takes a little bit of time to set up. So we're having slight problems here because um, I don't know who's registered and who's here or who's not. I think there was a time lapse when I gave you that code and I actually hadn't added your names yet. So if we tried it again now, it should work. So it takes time to set up and it, it's anonymous. So that could be a pro or a con. So when something is anonymous online, there are problems with untoward comments which students could give each other and um, I could allow for students to give unruly comments to each other like that was I'm not going to say that word sh1t <laughs> or uh, and uh, there is an app so T Tom Robb the producer of this tool pr did produce a, an online app um, sorry an app with the Apple App Store only I'm not I think recently just this year an Android version was released. So there should be an Android and an iOS version of the app. And it does require a bit of prior testing to, to get set up. 
Okay, sure. I love I love the really? fact that actually you've you've really demonstrated, Bruce, that you know when you're going to choose a tool and you've given us a really great tool there to look at, you you mm -hmm. do need there's you know it's a bit front loaded. You do have to spend a little bit of time investigating and checking things out, and, you do. and that's, you do. I that's, think that's true. that's important to demonstrate because often when you see people show something it's like magic you see it yes. happen and you think yes it's going to be that easy yes but i think it's really important well, it that is, we, well, we're honest unfortunately people. yes <laughs> that's right yes you have you do have to go through the learning curve as the teacher so if the teacher's confused then there's no hope for the students so they really you, the teacher has to take a bit of time and and that's true of any app in getting set up and trying it and trial and erroring it first before you actually use it in the class Okay, so the three key elements to what I think are good presentations are voice projection, content, and visuals. Okay, and with with our tools that we all have at hand, um, with our fancy smartphones that we most of us have these days, uh, we have a camera. There's a camera on pretty much every smartphone. Every smartphone. There's a voice recorder, and through those two things, we can. We can use these three tools here. Oh, we can use um, Peer Eval. We can also use this one, Speaking Photo, which I'm going to introduce next. And the last one today is called Flipgrid. Flipgrid. Okay, so we're going to use these three tools here. So we've we've done Peer Eval. I'll not talk about that anymore. Next one I'm going to talk about is um, Speaking Photo. Okay, and if if you've tried to use apps for presentations in your classes previously you may have come across some of these these tools on the left hand side here voki voice thread uh, talker this one's talker um shutterfly these are some of the and all of these are all quite complicated to use in my opinion so let me introduce just quickly what one of them talker so talker allows you to this is a picture of me <laughs> taken in May last year. That's why I have a jumper on. Very nice. Like the sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, and this allows you to take a picture and record your voice and it changes it to something like this. <laughs> I feel like I want to put a speech bubble on that. <laughs> <laughs> an oxymoron there. Okay, and this is um this is Valentina, who is a great partner of mine. She is she's the secretary or was the secretary of the Mall Board, Mall Sig Board. Uh, for three years we worked together and she's based in Milan in Italy. And um I made and I took a picture of, of her and record my voice over it. <laughs> I can't, we can't hear, I can't hear anything. Am I supposed to be hearing? Ah, uh, you can't hear. No. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, no, not to worry, you, you can't hear that. No, but pres uh, presumably, so normally you would, I'm not quite sure whether it's to do with the sound settings around sharing content. Um, okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm not, this is why, using a different tool here too. I think I need to offer sound as well. I don't know. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, you I'm can, not do sure Do you know how to that. share the sound? Um, Teresa, how do you share the sound? And, and we've, with, we've, with, we've had um, an issue. We couldn't hear any sound when Bruce showed. Mm. Um, yeah, no, when okay. it, it, there's a very small um, uh, tick that you have to tick underneath the share screen. You have to tick share sound. So when you do share underneath content, the share screen. Stop so, sharing. It says, "See, baby, it's now sharing right now." So yeah, yeah if where, you where stop your sharing session and then open it again, when you do share screen, um, the, at the bottom of that dialog box, there's a little box on the left, share audio. No, I, I can't see that one here. It doesn't have it. Nothing there. Oh, oh, you're on a Mac, aren't you? <laughs> Let 
Mm. And it may look different from how it looks on, on a Windows machine. Um, do you want me to, mm. so, uh, Kate, do you want right, to okay, share no, it no, from your worry. screen? I'll just... Um, I could do I it mean, from mine, we... but I, I couldn't actually get on the site. Um, I'm a big Flipgrid no, this user, is... I think Flipgrid's brilliant, but the... Um, this is, this is a different app. I couldn't get on. Now this is, is this, talk, you were showing yeah, talker, okay. you were showing talker, weren't you? With it, yeah. it was an, an image, a photo yes. with a, a moving mouth and, and it was saying something. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. we oh, can okay. just imagine. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't, not to worry, let's not dwell on that. All right, so um, apps like this, like talker, are fun, time consuming, and a little bit complicated, and in my opinion, a little bit uneducational. Not so, they're, they're, they're purely fun, really. So. Um, speaking photo is a great uh, alternative to something like Talker. Again, speaking photo allows students to make engaging content without the huge production um, time required for something like Talker or iMovie or many of the other tools out there. So speaking photo uh, is also another app available for Android and iOS, and it's from download, downloadable from any uh, source. Um, it allows students to create uh, videos, short videos with recorded voice over picture, any picture of their choice on their phone or downloaded from uh, Google Images or somewhere. Okay, and it allows, it's very easy to create, edit, and share from anywhere. Okay. And this is the website, speakingphoto.com. And you can so record over pictures, save a video, and then upload to an LMS of your choice or upload to any central location that you'd like. Very easy to use. And most importantly, it's free. So they, they run uh, a three-step pro, three process, which they call shoot, speak, and share. So after creating an account, Creating account, login name, password, etc. like you have to do with all these tools these days. You take a picture, then you record your voice behind the picture, and you save it and then share it. Shoot, speak, and share. Okay, so I have some examples here, and we're going to, I think, have the same problem again, uh, because there's some sound here, and I don't know how to share the sound. So Yeah, the, the audio doesn't, isn't automatically channeled through unless you select when you share your screen so but we can get the idea because mm. we can use it um and in fact yeah, if you've so got if you've got a pre-prepared mm. one that you can share a link for people can play that back in okay. their browser mm. so so this yeah, this here is a picture here on the left on the can you see that picture there with uh like a barbecue setup yeah. lots of veg japanese so japanese this, food <laughs> that's right so this is um a student is talking behind this picture and you can't quite you can't hear that right hmm. no let me try again uh, uh, it looks very good edamame edamame yeah. beans there. edamame yeah that's right uh let me try one more time to Adrian wants to share the content. Okay, I can share. I can't. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that looks even tastier. So, Look at that. There are some students oh, talking okay. here. And then the picture will change. <laughs> okay, so I guess you couldn't hear that. So what, what was happening there was that students had used their phones to take a picture. Uh, or not even take a picture, but use a picture they had in their phone from their summer holidays or spring holidays. And I asked students to introduce 
their summer holidays, spring holidays by making an introductory video using Speaking Photo. And it works every time, students love doing it. And because they're presenting in a comfort of their own home, informally, you can bypass all the nerves and all the stuttering and all the uh, problems that they have. And if they're not happy with the first case, with the first um, um, take, they can take it again as many times as they want until they're happy with their final take. And then when they're happy with that, they save to the camera and then they upload to the screen, upload to their LMS or uh, even email. All right. So the pros for, for using Speaking Photo is it's a very easy to use tool. Uh, it's both on Android and iOS. It's free and the, it's has a basically little learning curve, no learning curve. And the free version though has a 30 second limit on every picture. So meaning you can only record 30 seconds of your voice over every picture. If you want to record more than 30 seconds, there's a fee involved. And I think it's four euros for an unlimited length of record uh, recordings. But the way around that is to continually add the same picture again and record again. So you can add unlimited amount of pictures as long as you don't speak for more than 30 seconds. It's it, great to have those workarounds. It, you work around that. Yeah. So the pros and cons, just like any tool. And uh, an alternative to speaking photo would be something like iMovie. And I have another example of a student produced tool, um, student produced video made with iMovie. And you can see the, the how very different it would look. So here on the left, we have a speaking photo um, video. Someone's talking here. And then on the right, this one here. So you may not hear this, but there's lots of background music playing here. And uh, we've got a student on the right. She's talking about how she made bread and she learned how to make rolls. And she went on a trip to a nearby city, stayed with a friend and met lots of new people and saw lots of amazing things. And on the right here, it looks so much more professional, right? But this student, she was asked at the end by all the other students in class, how long did it take you to make this video? And she said, two days. <laughs> two days so not every student has two days to uh, make videos especially the ones that we teach these days so something like that is available but it just takes longer so what i wanted us to do today is for us to make to try using speaking photo or uh, another tool to introduce yourself tell us where you are and how you feel feel about the past two years so using your tool we're for speaking photo. And I think if we did that, we would have we would run out of time. So I'm gonna actually leave that as a as a external project. You can do that later. The next, the last tool I wanted to introduce today is called Flipgrid. I'm not sure if you've heard of Flipgrid. Can I ask the audience today? Have you heard of Flipgrid? Yeah, Teresa? Big, big and Flipgrid Kate? user here, yeah. Yeah, love it. Oh, you are okay, okay, yeah. that's great. So I'm not sure if people, uh, so I'm asking the wrong people here. You're not beginners, see, and I was, I was. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a beginner. I mean, I've, 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 I know what it is, but I haven't actually used it a lot myself. So I, I feel like you can treat me like a beginner. All right. Okay, okay. Oh, let me do that. So Flipgrid is a video tool that allows teachers to post um, videos, allows students to post um, videos to a confined, secure area. So you make a class. And then um, again, like, like the previous two tools like Purival and Mentimeter, you get an access code. Students uh, input that access code into their phone or their computer. And then you should be able to see a, all the video content which has been uploaded to that secure place, right? And it, this uh, Flipgrid was introduced, was released actually burst in 2017. So about four years ago. And then it was bought over by Microsoft in 2018 and they kept it free, which is great. And I hope that it remains free. Uh, it allows users to create, share video content 
in a secure area and it's great for classroom presentations or for presentations that we have students do in their own time in an informal setting and then upload to a virtual class somewhere and allows everyone in that class to comment comment on each other's content and unlike um peer eval or other tools it's um it's good because it's not anonymous so you can tell who has given comments for each person which avoids any form of, sort of negative criticism or something like that so uh, we're going to try this we're going to try this now let's try okay so i would like both of you to open your computers or phone i guess and go to flipgrid and if you have it if you have the app on your phone open the app and if you don't please download it it's very easy to do and um, you'll come up with I'm just going to do this on my phone here flip grid okay and you'll come up with something like this now say enter or enter the join code and the join code is 0567-3186 Four five x seven. Oh, oh dear. Ah, sorry. The join code has changed. It's not that anymore. The join code has changed. Oh dear. This is what happens. Is when uh, the join code now is five five one three. Okay, this is the join code. Five one three F five nine one E. Okay, and it's case sensitive. So you can do that. Five one three five nine one E. Could you just repeat that join right. code, sorry? Five one three uh, let me show let me share my screen there again. Yep. Five one three. F591E. So in lower case. Can you see my screen? You should be able to see the PowerPoint there. Yep. Okay, and and for to allow both of you to comment, the teacher has to add the email address of uh, each user, so each student. Each student, so you have to. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I have to give you access to this um, class in Flipgrid before you can add any content. If you understand that, you understand that. Um, so, and for me to do that, I have to. Uh, I'm not being I'm not being allowed in. Okay, that's because okay. I haven't added you. So, okay. so I'm, in I'm, the you don't in, know. I'm, I'm using in, my in the in the very email. in the first um in the first slide I asked you to input your email address and uh, um. I see. I can see that Kate has done that, but uh, Teresa hasn't done that yet. Teresa, could you tell me your email address? Oh well, hang on. In, in the um, no, I'm using my Gmail for Flipgrid, but I put in a different email address for the. Um, ah, okay. So what's the, your Gmail address then? <laughs> it, uh, this is another brilliant demonstration, Bruce, because <laughs> because. <laughs> Yeah. When you ask people for email addresses, most people have got at least a couple. <laughs> Two or three. And, that's yeah. the thing. That's the and, thing yes. and, and Flipgrid, the wonderful thing about Flipgrid is it's so flexible and it does have lots of configurations, but it does demand either a Google or a Microsoft email account. Ah, um, okay, okay. So, so yeah, um, it, it, but it's a great demonstration of the time that you put in before you <laughs> run an activity because it's all front-loaded, yeah. isn't it? 
Mm. Kate, Kate um, what was your Gmail address? I've put it in the chat, but I'm I'm going to join with um, my Microsoft. Put it in the chat. Yeah, but I'm going to join with my uh -huh. Microsoft email because um, that should be. Oh no, it hasn't worked either. Okay, just <laughs> use my Gmail one then. <laughs> Kate, okay, 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 got it. Uh, we've possibly got that added sort of you know we're we're in the uk or in japan and the time lag okay doing things yeah and and um teresa did you have did you add an uh, prof teresa mac okay i got that okay so we've learned something new i didn't know that you had to have a gmail or a microsoft account okay so both of you have been invited. I think you have to open a Gmail, open your account and approve that. So this is one of the security measures we have to work around in order for Flipgrid to work. Okay. So um, here we go. You have a new Flipgrid co leader. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now it should work. All right. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, I'm in. Uh, oh, I'm still not being allowed in. <laughs> okay, just carry on, maybe. <laughs> yes, I will. I'll just carry on. Okay. Okay, so here, you should be able to see my screen here. You recall Outreach More Tools. Okay, and there's a little, there's a little gif of someone waving hand. It says, hola, hello, hola, salut. If you click on that, you should be able to see a video. Okay. And uh, these are two videos which I've added. Two videos which I've added here. Well, let's have a quick look at them. This is one, the first one I made with speaking photo. Okay, so that's one video. And uh, after viewing each other's videos, you can add comments here to the bottom and say, wonderful, wonderful office. Yeah. Messy, like the setup. Uh, okay, and then I can send, and then Whoever's, whoever added that video will be able to see a comment underneath it. And it could be, it could be any form of comment to give them advice to how to improve, or it could be um, just a general comment about the contents of the video. All right. So, and then if you go, uh, if you go um, back, back here, I uh, made an, a different video. And this this video here I made with the Flipgrid tool. Okay, and this and this is a moving video. We need we mean moving in terms of mobile rather than moving in terms of motion, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so that so this tool with Flipgrid you can um, create move uh, well videos where with speaking video you're making a still video with sound. And you still can't hear the sound there. So uh, this was a little bit muddled because um, I didn't know that you actually needed a Gmail or a Microsoft account to use Flipgrid. So we've learned that today. And um, I hope that each of you watching, watching this can uh, use these tools that we've used today. Hold on. And and uh, I was going to introduce some data which I have from students who clearly say that they prefer giving presentations in a in the comfort of their own homes as opposed to in class. Okay, so if you're interested in using any of these tools, I can share these slides. And the tools I used today were Google Forms, Mentimeter, Peer Eval, Speaking Photo, and Flipgrid. So I've got five tools which I used. Hopefully you can use them in your settings too. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, 
don't hesitate to email me always 20 thank you so much bruce for overcoming everything and it, you are a real <laughs> a, a great example of how to cope through a pandemic and cope with any opportunity <laughs> that arises yeah <laughs> well well done on battling through our uh, uh okay. this morning i see gems joined us so uh, gem i'm going to I'd make you a presenter uh, very jamie shortly. jamie jamie I'm gonna, jamie's yeah, in it I, sorry, I can't say that word without saying j'aime because it says j'aime to me. I'm a French speaker. <laughs> ah, j'aime. Ah, j'aime. <laughs> j'aime ça. So nice. Ah, so you got the... Well, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. I, I learned a, a lot there. And actually, I was play I did get into Flipgrid in the end while you were talking. Yeah. I managed oh, you to did, did. get through all I the like... invitations and things and emails. And um, that was and great. It's really had... useful. Absolutely, okay. we can. Okay, you can see what I um, added there. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the recording off, but not without saying that uh, we've also learned, we've co-learned together, which is brilliant. And we've also learned a lot about the shortcomings of various um, online classroom tools um, and you know just how <laughs> yeah. much work has to go into <laughs> to getting familiar with them. Just don't give up, that's the thing. So. Mm. Yeah, but those are, those are brilliant. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. And, and, I, and I will cascade them on to the people that I know and we'll through 